Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation from Math Olympiads. This is a really nice problem, by the way. We have x plus 1 to the 4th power plus x plus 3 to the 4th power equals 1 minus the product of x plus 1 and x plus 3. And we're going to be solving for, guess what? x values, obviously, right? What else could you solve for? So to be able to solve this equation, I'll be presenting two methods, even though one of the methods may be incomplete, because of the amount of work I have to do, and I'm kind of lazy, right? You know that probably. So anyways, I'll just give you some pointers at least. Let's start with the first method. First, and for first and second methods, for both, I want to put all the variables on the same side. Actually, that was the original statement of the problem, but I wanted to make this kind of fit nicely into a thumbnail. That's why I put the part of the expression on the right-hand side, but or under or underneath. It doesn't really matter because all you have to do is add this product to both sides and you're going to have the exact same solution. So we got, we're not changing the domain. Okay, cool. How do you solve an equation like this? With the first method, it's, which is called no pain, no gain, you do the brute force method, the most brute force method you can, okay? And that would be pretty much expanding everything. So if you expand x plus 1 to the 4th power, remember the formula for a plus b to the 4th power. That would be a to the 4th plus 4a cubed b. And by the way, uh, the coefficients are going to be coming from the combinatorial coefficients, like you're going to have 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, which is 6. So the next one is going to be 6. And then you're going to have 4 again from symmetry. And finally, you're going to finish with 1b to the fourth. Make sense? If you apply to both of these, then you're going to have the following. For x plus 1 to the fourth, you're going to have x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. That's a little easier because you don't have to worry about the b. And then for uh, x plus 1, and then for the second one, for this one, you're going to have uh, x to the fourth plus 4a cubed uh, multiplied by 3. So that will be 4x cubed multiplied by 3. And then 6a squared multiplied by 3 squared. And then I don't think this is going to fit. So let's continue here. Plus 4 times x times 3 cubed because that's where we are, right? This is where we are, plus b to the fourth, which is three to the fourth. And then we have to follow by this product, which you can distribute. Let's do that right now, so we can get the whole thing, pretty much. That would be x squared plus four x plus three. It's also important to know how to distribute these like real quick, because whenever you're given a problem like this, you have to be able to factor it into two, um, what's it called, uh, binomials, okay? Or linear factors. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this as much as we can. For example, x to the fourth plus x to the fourth is going to give us 2x to the fourth. And then I have 4x cubed plus 12x cubed, which is going to give me 12 plus 4, 16x cubed. And then the x squared will, prob will probably have quite a few terms. Let's see, I can gather 6x squared. And then here it's going to give me 54, so 6, 54. And this is not x squared, and 1. So it's going to be 7 plus 54, which is 61 x squared. And then for x, we have the 4x. And then we have the 108 x. And we have the 4x again. So it's going to be 8 x, 116 x, right? And then finally, we should have a constant term. There's a 1 here and a 3 here. That's a 4. This is 81. 81 plus 4 is 85. Beautiful. Not really. It's kind of ugly, but what can you do? This is a quartic equation, and there's definitely a way to solve quartic equations. One way is divide everything by 2 and make the left-hand side a perfect square, which is not super duper hard, but you're going to get some fractions from here and here. Or another method is you can multiply everything by 8 and then try to make uh, this. Actually, no. You can, divide, uh, you can multiply by 4, and then this should give you 2x squared squared, and you can try to make the left-hand side a perfect square while also making the right-hand side a perfect square. Yes, that can be done, but again, for people like me, you know, people that are lazy, this is way too much work. But at least I showed you, you can do it very brute force expand it, and you're going to be able to solve it. 
But hey, there should be an easier way to do it, right? Since this problem appeared on a math Olympiad, I can't remember which one, probably somewhere in Russia, but there should be a nicer way to do it. And that's called the second method. Tada! Now, first of all, you probably noticed that we have the x plus 1 and x plus 3 being repeated, right? So there's a good reason behind that. And also, x plus 1 and x plus 3 are nicely separated by 2. That's also good. So this calls for what? Substitution, right? This definitely calls for substitution. But the million dollar question is, what should be called what? What does that mean? It means like, are we going to set x plus 1 equal to y or something else? Or is it something else? Okay, that's a good question. So here's what we need to think about. We have x plus 1 and x plus 3 in the same equation. So think about what's in the middle. In other words, their average. This is a really nice problem-solving strategy, especially for these kinds of questions. You just take the average, and that would turn out to be x plus 2. Why? Because it's the same distance from this and from that. You get the idea? Okay, the average of 1 and 3 is 2. Great, that's it. So we should call this something. How about y? And you're like, why? Don't question it, okay? So we're going to do the following. Since we don't have x plus 2 in this equation, we can replace x with y minus 2 instead. It's the same thing, but it's easier. Replace x with y minus 2 here and here. You're going to realize that the first one turns into y minus 1 to the fourth, and the second one turns into y plus 1 to the fourth. That's why this substitution is so powerful. Now, what's going to happen is just going to follow the same pattern. You're going to continue with this and that. Make sense? Done? Almost done. Now, we have the binomial theorem again with the fourth power. But guess what? It's much nicer because of symmetry. A lot of things are going to cancel. Have you noticed that? So let's go ahead and write it down. This is going to give me y to the fourth minus 4y cubed plus 6y squared minus 4y plus 1. If I write the same thing with all plus signs, certain things are going to cancel out. I just want to align them so that I can show you real quick how these two simplify. Ta-da, these are gone. And we end up with 2y to the fourth plus 12y squared plus 2. Great. And then we have this, which is y squared minus 1. So let's go ahead and add it all together. We have 2y to the fourth plus 12y squared plus 2 plus the difference of two squares, which is y squared minus 1. You should definitely know that formula. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. How nice. They cancel out. That's what makes these problems so beautiful. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, this problem is so contrived. So what? Competition problems are always contrived, but there's always a hidden method behind it, which is always elegant. Almost always, right? <laughs> Anyways, so now this is what we have. 2y to the fourth plus 13y squared equals 0. And that's just amazing, right? Because now we can take out a y squared, right? It says 2y squared plus 13 equals 0. And from here, you only get one real solution, which is y equals 0. Yay! Because if you set this equal to 0, you get y squared equals negative 13 halves. Uh-oh, there are no real solutions. But why don't we find the complex solutions? Some people are going to be saying that, right? Well, complex solutions and complex problems are mainly reserved for another channel, which is called A plus BI. That's another channel that I have. So if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. And if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos first before you get frustrated. And always ask questions. Never, ever give up and continue to hustle. That's how you learn. Okay. So y equals 0 gives us something nice because what is y? y is x plus 2. Nice. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and replace y with x plus 2. We're going to get x equals negative 2 as a solution. And you can definitely check it out. Like if x is negative 2, you're going to get negative 2 plus 1 to the fourth, which is 1. Negative 2 plus 3 to the fourth, which is 1. And then negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And positive 1 is going to give you negative 1. They're going to cancel out, giving you 1. So it checks. Is that the only real solution? Yes. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.